Just over two weeks ago, Russia began a full invasion of its neighbor Ukraine. Many have asked the questions of Putin's motivations for this. The brilliant analysis of our media and politicians is that Putin is just another Hitler who hates our freedom and wants to rebuild the Soviet Union, which is a bit ironic since Ukraine has their fair share of Nazis too. Of course, while he is a dictator, things are a lot more complicated than that. And Putin tells us his reasons for war directly in a speech a couple of days prior. His most pressing concern is the expansion of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. This alliance was founded to counter the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact. Since, since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russian leaders such as Boris Yeltsin and Vladimir Putin were promised that NATO would not expand. In the beginning, Putin even spoke well, well of NATO. However, this promise was only verbal, and NATO started expanding anyways. Even several former Soviet bloc countries were brought into the alliance the organization getting closer and closer to Russia's border. Now, this may not seem to warrant an invasion on paper, but consider similar situations from U.S. history. When the Soviet Union placed weapons in a friendly country near the U.S., America flipped out and almost took a nuclear war. Putin, so it seems, considers Russia a great power, worthy of some sphere of influence. Many analysts have warned that Russia will not back down in sudden. This includes Cato Institute analysis Ted Carpenter, who says that history will show that Washington's treatment of Russia in the decades following the demise of the Soviet Union was a policy blender of epic proportion. Second, Putin has accused the Ukrainian government of committing genocide in Western Ukraine. This refers to the situation in the Donbass region since the 2014 revolution. And to discuss this, we have to discuss the 2014 revolution. In 2014, Ukrainian President Viktor Viktor Yanukovych was going to sign an economic deal with the European Union. Then Russia stepped in and offered the country a $15 billion loan to keep them within their sphere of influence. The president turned down the EU deal and chose the Russian deal. This sparked protests that eventually toppled the government. In response, people in the eastern part of Ukraine, who are mostly Russian-speaking, declared breakaway republics, and Russia also took Crimea. Of course, that says nothing about the U.S. involvement in the coup. This is shown more, most clearly in the leaked 2014 call between, at the time, Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland and the U.S. Ambassador in Ukraine. In it, the two, the two discuss who's going to be the next president of Ukraine and what they need to do to uh, implement it. I mean, imagine if China funded a coup in Mexico that instituted a communist pro-China government that they began to funnel millions of, millions of dollars in weapons to. America would be pretty concerned about that. Back to Putin's uh, claims. Um, it is true that Russia is a highly ethnically divided country, with ethnic with Ukrainians on the east and more Russian speaking speakers in the west. Two groups have uh, quite a bit divided political beliefs, as seen in these uh, election maps. You see, this guy's the more Ukrainian, this guy's the more pro Russian side. That was part of the election. I don't know. Uh, so it's perfectly un it's unsurprising that when the Maidan, coup, Maidan revolution took place, western parts of the country declared their independence. Later, later that year, in September 2014, a ceasefire agreement known as the Minsk Agreement was signed. In this agreement, Ukraine was to give special semi-independent status to the Donbass region in exchange for peace. However, the Ukrainian government refused to implement such changes to its constitution. This resulted in continued violence in the region with both sides claiming the other is violating the ceasefire. This is the origin of Putin's genocide claims. This state of affairs has continued up until the start of Putin's invasion. It is why he began the war by recognizing the independence of the two breakaway republics in Donbass. Ultimately, the... Yeah, here's the Donbass. Ultimately, the only way out of the current conflict would be without undue death and destruction is for NATO to back off from Ukraine and make it a buffer state between the West and Russia. This is a mistake to ever think we could just bring our alliance right up to the Russian border without any reaction. Worse, America's antagonism towards Russia has only driven them to make closer ties with China instead of westernizing. Consequences of this are still to be seen. Thank you.